Peggy 18. Hello everyone, this is Ryan Bernard, Game Director on Tom Clancy's The Division. And today we're very excited to give you this exclusive walkthrough where we're going to follow a team of three players as they move through the Dark Zone. So here we have our group of three agents, uh, Ryan, Megan, and Bronson. And we're going to be following them as they enter this very dangerous area in search of some awesome loot. Ryan is uh, set up as the healer for the group, so he's got support skills loaded with pulse and healing grenade. Megan uh, is, is DPS, so she's got the seeker mine and sticky bomb loaded up. And Bronson's going to be taking the brunt of the punishment, so he's got pulse as well and the turret, so he can uh, keep the attention of the enemies during firefights. After the virus broke out, the Dark Zone was originally set up as a quarantine zone in the middle of Manhattan to contain the sick. But things rapidly went out of control, and there was a massive blackout and the military had to evacuate. They had to leave their most powerful gear and weapons inside the Dark Zone. So this loot is extremely valuable to you as a player. But this also means that it's the most dangerous place in the game. This loot attracts a lot of attention, including other real players. The Dark Zone is a multiplayer gameplay space in our world which you can seamlessly enter without any loading screens. Outside of the Dark Zone, you can play in teams of up to four, but once inside, you can decide to collaborate with other agents or betray them, kill them, and take their loot. As we climb the wall to enter, you can see the UI starts to cut out because once inside the Dark Zone, we lose our connection to the outside world. And this area is highly contaminated, so we can see the players put on their masks to protect themselves from the virus, and then they're set to go. Okay, now we see our group is coming up on some enemies up ahead. As we get closer, we can see that these are actually part of the Rikers faction. And this is a group of convicts which, after the virus broke out, escaped the prison and have flooded into Manhattan to take advantage of the chaos. Here we can see Megan does a pulse, which gives the group information about what enemy types and levels that they'll be facing. And then we can engage. As you can see here, Bronson's going to go up uh, right on top of him and take point, so he can take the attention of the enemies and draw aggro, and we can support him from behind with healing grenades, as you saw there, and covering fire. Using covers in the divisions is really important. You're going to be seeing the agents here as they move around flanking the different enemies, moving cover to cover, using height elevation to their advantage, and really trying to make sure that you're not exposed at any time, because when you're out of cover, you take a lot of damage from enemies. And it looks like we've only got a couple rankers left here, and Bronson is really taking his roll to heart and pushing right up into their face. And they've cleared him out. And here you can see Bronson's actually been a little bit too hardcore on this, and he's uh, in what we call the down state. So since they're playing in a group, Ryan can head over and actually revive him so he doesn't die and need to respawn and run back to his group, and he can get right back into the action. And here we can see that Ryan's actually found a loot crate. And he's gotten extremely lucky and has gotten a legendary drop. But as we can see, it's actually contaminated. All gear and weapons in the Dark Zone are contaminated and they need to be extracted before they can be actually equipped by the players or agents in the game. So in order to do that, our group is gonna to move to a nearby extraction point in Bryant Park. Once the group is inside an extraction area, they'll need to shoot up a flare which calls in a helicopter. Then they need to hold tight for 90 seconds and extract their goods. All right, now we see our group has come across a different group of enemies, and these are the cleaners. Cleaners used to work for the city of New York, but they got trapped on Manhattan when the quarantine was declared, and they've lost it. They want to, in their own minds, clean the city from the virus by burning anything and everything in their path, dead or alive. And this group of cleaners is actually a tougher group of what we call elites in the game. They have much higher health pools and much higher damage output. So our group here is going to really have to work together using their weapons and skills to take them out. Of course, they drop much better loot and give a lot higher experience. And we got Ryan seems to have moved up to a kind of a bad cover position here. He's taking damage from the right and he's got a grenade coming in and he needs to move and he's too slow. So he's going to need to top himself off with a nice self heal. 
All right, so now we've dealt with the cleaners and we can move on towards the extraction area. But it looks like our group is not alone and another group of players is in the same extraction area. In the dark zone, it's, it's very important to find out player intention relatively quickly, whether or not they're a friend or foe. But it looks like these two are not interested in engaging. So our group's gonna continue on and try to get that legendary weapon out. Extraction detected. Proceed with caution. Another team of agents has actually started an extraction, and our group is gonna move to investigate. And as they come around, we do indeed see that an extraction is taking place, and they got about a minute left on their timer before the helicopter shows up. But we don't see the extracting team. Oh, and here we see that the extracting team actually got the jump on our group, and Bronson's been quickly down. And since they engaged on us, they have now been flagged as rogue, which puts a big bounty on their back for a certain period of time. Luckily, Bronson was able to make it back to our group and we were able to quickly revive him and get him back up into the fight. And now we've got some PvP chaos happening. And here we see Ryan throws out another healing grenade to, to heal up both of his teammates as they're flanking around to the left to try to get better position on these rogue agents. All right, we see Megan's gonna throw out another pulse, which really gives us good positioning on their locations. And here we can see another downside to going rogue in the dark zone. They have attracted another group of players, which is helping us take down this rogue group. And there we go. And of course, when you die in the dark zone, you drop any contaminated gear that you're currently carrying. It looks like the two groups now can divvy up the goods that they got from this rogue group. It looks like they've decided to just take out the new players and take all of the loot for themselves. You're attacking friendly forces. Rogue protocol initiated. So now in order to secure this loot to make sure it's theirs, they need to, to complete an extraction. So now our team has 90 seconds to control this area and to stay alive to get their loot out when the helicopter arrives. And you can see them fanning out into uh, good cover positions here in case any other uh, players come into the area or those groups that we engaged come back. Which it looks like indeed they do. But now we're set up in really good positions here to be able to take them out. Bronson and Megan are laying down damage from the front line, and Ryan is supporting from behind. And again, it's really important in the game to make sure that you're always in cover whenever possible, and that you're not being flanked by any enemies. Here we see Ryan tossing a healing grenade as he runs past Bronson there. And they're gonna focus on these two uh, players here. Straight in front of them. Now they got 30 seconds left to, to stay alive and to control the area. Well, that was some nice coordination there. It looks like a double kill coming off. All right, and they dealt with the the other group yet again, and now the helicopters arrived. So they've they were able to survive and be able to get their loot out. And we'll head back to their base of operations.
Now we can see the group is still flagged as rogue, and they're a very juicy target for other agents in the area. So they really should leave this area quickly and decide where to head out to next. All right, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed a little glimpse into the gameplay inside the dark zone of Tom Clancy's The Division. Tragedy is invisible. People turn away from it and run from it if they can. And it's hard knowing that you belong here. That your purpose lies amongst all this pain. But someone's gotta be there. To pick it up. To push back. Put the first piece back together. Put us all back together. a little bit the world's so quiet and still Santa's out there flying around and it's true okay I know where we are I'm setting the waypoint to the base. Check your map. Sir, I think we found the hijack one. We had a ship, you hear me? It broke through the subway tunnels. I, I don't know Looks like it's pretty close. All right, follow me, it's this way. Looks clear. a reading over here. This must have been the last train out. Looks like everybody panicked. Okay. Where's Bronson? I'll send him another invite. This must be where they were talking about. Watch your step. There you are. Hey guys. I brought Chris. Hey Chris. Hey. Scoping up the area up ahead. Okay, we're about to unlock my base. It's up here on the right. out first as quietly as possible. All right, I have Tesla and Pulse up. All right, Ryan, let's change up our skills. I'll pull aggro from the left here. You guys good to go? All good. Yep, ready. All right, here we go. Up there! He's down. What? Get, him. Get, him. Get, him. Get the last guy, get the last guy. Don't let him he's getting away. He's gone, he's gone, got incoming. All right, let's go. Okay, come from the right. Find cover, find cover. Ooh, watch out, watch out, watch out. Holy crap. There they are. There's loads of them. I can't get a shot. Try and hit them from the right. I can't. I'm gonna switch my weapon. Okay, I got you, I got you. I'm moving up. Okay. Great. Can you mark some of these guys? 
Knife got trouble? I can't move, I'm pinned. You gotta hit him, Chris. It's all you, dude. Yeah, I'm on it. Light him up. Oh, God, look out. Let's go, let's go, let's go. He's down. I'm pushing forward, I'm pushing forward. Brandon, wait. I'm down. Hold on. Let's go, revive me, let's go. Oh, there's a guy right behind me. All right, you're fine. Get up. Okay, last two. Hit him, hit him, hit him. Turret's down. Get this guy on the left. Good. Okay, go, go. We gotta move up forward. Last one. Keep the pressure on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait for him to reload. This guy's nuts. Somebody do something. <laughs> good game, guys. Okay, that was good. Welcome, guys. So this is the base of operations. Sweet home, huh? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But it's huge. Let's try to get medical online first. a little bit the world's so quiet and still Santa's out there flying around and it's true that if you be Oh. Kill you guys up. Nice, thank you. 
Hey guys, what's up? Hey. Oh, what's up, Chris? Welcome to the battle, dude. All right, group buff coming your way. Okay, thanks. Nice. Hold on, I'm getting shot at now. Yeah, go around the back. All right, moving. Oh shit, hold on, I think we got one more. Watch out, watch out, on the left, on the left. Yep. Oh, you see the guy on the roof? Yeah, oh, there he is, okay. He's the one doing it. Wow. Oh, he's, he's like an elite, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Mark him now. Shit. I can't see him. I cannot get a shot. Chris, can you mark him or something? Hold on, I think I got him. Yeah, got him. Nice. Okay, that's done. Let's check out the inside. Alright, I need to hop out. I'll see you guys later, though. See you later. See you, dude. You guys coming? Yeah, right behind you. Oh, there's some cops locked up in here. Okay. Uh, always clear. in our city, at our doors, that we realize how fragile we are. All of us. All of this.
please. Please no more. And the real truth is, no one watched. No one saw. Wanted to see. <laughs> Tragedy is invisible. People turn away from it and run from it if they can. And it's hard knowing that you belong here. That your purpose lies amongst all this pain. But someone's gotta be there. To pick it up. To push back. To put the first piece back together. Put us all back together. In 2001, a real-world exercise tested the emergency response to a bioterror attack on the continental United States. The operation was called Dark Winter. Within just a few days, the simulation spiraled out of control. The operation predicted a rapid breakdown in essential institutions, civil disorder, and massive civilian casualties. Dark Winter has revealed how vulnerable we've become. Our lifestyle, our security, our safety, depends on a delicate and unstable economy. We've created a system so complicated that we no longer understand how to control it. Oil, power, shipping, transport. We live in a complex world. And the more complex it gets, the more fragile it becomes. The system is built on a global supply chain that gets things where they're needed, just in time. We've created a house of cards. Remove just one, and everything falls apart. And what's fueling this system? Money. Americans can spend $90 billion in a single day of shopping. Last year, 200 million people swarmed their local stores on November 23rd. We call that day Black Friday. Did you know that a flu virus can survive on the surface of a banknote for up to 17 days? One day, there will be a pandemic. It could begin during the crush of Black Friday sales. A pathogen will jump from tainted banknotes to human skin, onto food, toys, children, and loved ones. By the time patient zero feels the first sore throat, millions of people will already be infected. From this point, the breakdown will happen fast. Day one, hospitals will reach capacity. Panic will strike. Day two, quarantine zones will be established. Resources will be rationed. Transport will go into lockdown. Day three, international trade will stop. The oil will dry up. The stock market will collapse. Day four, the power will fail. The shelves will be empty. The taps will run dry. And once hunger and despair take hold, People will do anything for survival. By day five, everyone will be a potential threat. In 2007, a new presidential directive was signed quietly into law. This maps out the government's response to a crisis, a plan to cope with a real dark winter. It is known as Directive 51. There are rumors of shadow agencies, sleeper cells, covert agents, but nothing can be confirmed. Our complex world is primed for breakdown. And once the chaos strikes, there won't be resources to save us all. The only question left is, what will it take to save what remains?